What's going on? I'm Captain Robert, and here's the after show for Baldur's Gate episode 45. I like to call this episode Adam's episode. <laughs> is, that, is that anything like Gerald's game? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, a lot of RP in this episode. We've kept these folks RP and combat free now for like three episodes. They've been spoiled by all of your talent and wonderful storytelling. I'm it's not hating great. this at this point. I mean, come <laughs> on. This this was a great episode where we got to push Adam out of his uh, character comfort zone, stick him into that uh, that upper echelon. That that to him, it's got to be worse than combat. Honestly, tell me. Yeah, it was. Would wasn't... you rather fight something, <laughs> or would you rather deal with the upper echelon of society? No, it was it was. Uh, I felt like it was good. I think you're right. It was uh, it was a good time to kind of look at the uncomfortability and just sheer difference of Asher not having any actual experience with like the, the extreme upper class and how weird and strange and different it is. But there's those tropes that you kind of can see and tell. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun um, and I went into the episode not planning on doing anything, not coming with any precursor thought because Asher not reading any, any pamphlets. Ideas. <laughs> not reading any pamphlets. <laughs> so uh, we were like, I was like, all right, let's just do this live and uh, we'll react as things happen. And that's exactly what Asher would do. So I'm still ready to play out uh, bill number two in the satyrs that you gave me. I got, you gave me a gang over there, folks. Uh, I enjoy oh, yeah. it just as much as y'all, man. It's such uh, anytime that we have a big party scene, it's fun to be able to rely off each other and takes the burden off me to come up with as many interesting characters as possible because we've all seen at the end of the day i go end up going back to my southern upbringing and then the shitty parties that i've always gone to and we've seen those archetypes plenty uh so i'm excited when you bring and challenge uh the scene with characters that have different backgrounds and stuff where i'm like i feel like i'm learning about the character as it's approaching us inside of our minds it's always so much fun well and it's really exciting too like especially as Asher's interacting with these characters, we get to learn about more of his comfort level and who he feels comfortable with, with all of these. Like he's had to be like forced to be comfortable with us. It, maybe he's not always fully comfortable with us still, but Adam, you can clarify that or not. But, <laughs> but, but when it's Depends like on who like, and what gets he's eating at that point. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. This has been like a flash dating scene where it's like person, NPC, NPC, NPC. Yeah. And we get to see how... He reacts differently, like whether it's awkwardly kissing their hand or calling them out in his feet. Who taught so you know? fake kiss to sniff the hand? I'm so glad that she was like the coolest right. cucumber oh, in the yeah. batch. Now it's hers. That could have gone way different. Here. <laughs> yeah. I ripped her character straight off from a DM Heroes. I just hit the button and I was like, sweet. I got tall, athletic, uh, orc. And I was like, you know what? It's gonna be awesome in horseshoes. That's what we're gonna be doing here. We've got a little horseshoe Me, tournament since we're in the yeah, we're in the garden. That seems like a good time. But yeah. the sniff. Well, I mean, it was it was part of the awkwardness. It's like the same with the bow, and like it's like he doesn't oh. really understand, you know. Um, Kung Fu cringe. It's, it's funny, uh, or not really necessarily funny, but I think it's interesting the the dynamic of Jinrit having to kind of hold my hand through all of this and like really being the one also with Josiah to, to kind of know what's happening and kind of help walk me through some of these things, but from polar opposite like yeah. viewpoints. And like, you can tell the the anger or, you know, annoyance attention. of, of Jared. Yeah, like it's just like, oh man, it's it was, it was so good. And it was like two different perspectives, but both of them helping me get through this uh, all while counting on Gitsy and Aloon to do what they do best, and that's be themselves. <laughs> I thought I thought you meant getting into fights. Well, <laughs> not yet. Not so much I was, Gitsy, actually, but I was more... actually proud of Aloon because he didn't get into a fight. I was expecting it. He the minute gonna... that I dropped the Cloud Giants after I did it, because I wanted to tease, and for everybody that's a Game of Saving Throws fan, there's a certain yeah. piece of piano music that you yeah. just never want to hear. No! It'll give you PTSD to this day. So if you're a Game of Saving Throws fan, enjoy the Easter egg. But when I was like, oh my God, I just put a cloud giant here. 
That's the biggest, baddest thing that's in the room. He's gonna walk up to this. I, I started looking at the tokens. Like I was getting the tokens ready, like right after I said it, I'm like, he's gonna at least arm wrestle or like something is gonna go down. Just didn't, didn't, didn't come up. I got so distracted, Asher was giving, giving speeches. Here's the fun fact. Unbothered, staying in his lane. Moisturized, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. Driving, 100%. In my, in my head, Aloon was actually climbing any sort of trees that were inside this place. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just in, swinging from vines. Like, Yeah, I, I totally had him in my brain just climbing trees because there were, seemed to be trees in this place. Shit, so interesting. Interesting. the oldest juvenile in this campaign. Wait till yeah, this never never land camp that we have with Perry's encampment and the oh fairies. God, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. One one note uh, to a uh, nod to a loon is when we were in the dream realm and we were walking through, uh, and I thought about this on the fly as a, like okay, this is absolutely what Asher would think. And uh, you know, if you watch the episode, a uh, little lore drop here. Uh, I started with. You know, you don't venture off. You don't look into the void. You don't linger because there are things that go bump in the night. There are a vast a majority of things that can go wrong. And I think it was funny that Josiah was like, yeah, this this is bad. And, and Asher's like, no, this is great. But he is aware of all of those dangers. And I started by saying, oh, look at all these things that bump in the night. And then I immediately thought, no, no, no. A loon will want to go fight those. <laughs> so I was like, you'll be stuck you here by yourself doing nothing forever. <laughs> I immediately was like, there's nothing to do. You're going to be so bored. And I was like, well, reel it back, reel it back. Because A loon's like, no. oh, I will go fight them. Like, no, I was like, no. Nope. Never return to Baldur's <laughs> yeah. Gate again. So I, I had like, a couple no, of creatures ready in case somebody had a bad trip or something like that happened you started playing into the stare of the void i'm like oh this is great i have a couple of things that do go bump in the night right here because yep. it's the perfect <laughs> spot where it's like something uh like a small side encounter something i can tack mm. on the end and get done before we go in because i'm really I, I at that point i don't know how i'm going to close and i'm looking down and we're going well we got a little bit more time so we're going to get an interaction with the nefei so we're gonna improv and go somewhere. Like, I don't know, uh, cause I didn't know where he was gonna choose. So I just didn't bother. I was like, I, I know my handful of spots like on either side that would be really cool to visit, but you made an awesome scene for me. I'm like, oh, perfect. This is fantastic. I love this. This is gonna be great. I like this new character. Yeah, heroin. I mean, okay, okay. Let me, ask, let me ask Adam a question. Is that something you had written into the lore of your time in the Fae, or did you literally pull that out of your ass at the last minute? I'm curious. Wow. Um, I mean, <laughs> personally, I'm curious. Uh, I will. Yes. Uh, I, I, I will answer. No, no. Yes. You cannot give me that answer. You have to answer because it's for Patreon. Yeah, it uh, uh, and you're I'm only gonna, getting this from Patreon. I'll but, make your uh, roll. Yeah, no, uh, it was it was something I wrote down. I have um, a list of of stories and interactions and characters and stuff that I've I've built up because if anybody knows me, when I go into character, I, I full send and I'm like, okay, like I spent ten years, you know, I'm gonna have key friends, I'm gonna have a couple enemies, I'm gonna have some humorous interactions, some scary, you know, interactions, all of that stuff. I've built out a ton of different things, and some of these stories that I've mentioned are nods to them uh, now are, are all of them completely fleshed out no but that's the beauty of improv and building the story as it is uh perry Wynn was absolutely as i built him out uh and as i described him as kind of this jock jokester kind of like guy that's like mus muscles and you know all of that but the village and all of that kind of stuff was was more improv and it was like yeah this fits you know they're this is like party central. It's enjoyable. This was a fun time. And he does, Asher and him are in fact, genuine good friends. Uh, and he helped him out early on in his trip in the Feywild to understand how things work and all of that kind of stuff and kind of became a buddy that he leaned on, but a lot of practical jokes. And, you know, I'm sorry to any of you for what happens next week. It's not my fault. It's his fault. And uh, <laughs> Robo will have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> no, I, I just think at this point, there's a hundred percent chance that Periwin bought drugs from Furlin at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like... It might have happened. There might have been some psilocybin trade going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I want to know when you guys were brainstorming, you guys had precognitions about what you thought the fern and folly society was going to be like 
and I want I, I want to know what 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 your thoughts were. What do you think it was going to be like inside there? Do you think it was going to be more formal? Did you guess? Okay, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit raucous. What were you guys thinking? Probably pretty similar, actually. Like they want to be fey people, essentially. Like that's where they want to be at, and so they're going to try to mimic it in any way they can with this beauty and also perhaps a little more debauchery <laughs> but See, naked Cirque du Soleil that's yeah, what I mean that's yeah. what like those face summer nights <laughs> <laughs> yes I I will say that me and me and um radio here we had a, a little bit of a chat um because oh, we I saw that going one of going two into ways this. one was was kind of about how it went I knew it was going to be weird and I knew it was going to be difficult and I, I, I did prep knowing I was going to have to do a lot of RP because, you know, I didn't know what to expect. But I did message him when we went back and forth a little bit before the episode. And I was like, there's also this side of me just based on Robear that this is going to turn into some crazy weird cult. And they're going to try and sacrifice me for some sort of <laughs> fey deity or being. And I'm going to get eaten by the flower and the flower is going <gasps> to bloom into this monster or something. I was like, I was like, there's going to be some sort of crazy cultic weird shit. OK, no, seriously, um, OK, there, there was there was there was there was there was there was a thought between the two of us that him being a tiefling in Upper City, there's there's one to two factions. There's one side that's going to praise him and there's one side that wants to kill him for who he is given the history of the city and then, i mean that's that's kind of that's that's kind of okay. where we were at in our minds so i originally had you going into the bulb when i had written this out and it being and eventually it was like ah this is too sexual slash vor slash <laughs> Feed me, I don't want to do this because I may think this is, uh, you know, an encounter and like, I'm going to massacre this plant and I'm like, okay, <laughs> no. Nah. And then I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to recreate the pure version of Josiah's experience with his street drug. And so we added in like the little like ayahuasca style bowl and then a mixture of it's like straight Paul. And so it's like, okay. There'll be, a, it's a little bit more clear, like what's going on than like, all right, you're going to walk into this fucking plant. They just started worshiping in this sex cult like environment. And that's what I was like, man, I just don't, this is Vor and I don't like this. <laughs> I, will say, I will say I liked, I appreciated the nod to like, it, it didn't go full weird, like sex cult. It was like, yeah, you know me, I, I'm I, always going to saw that. I saw that as more of like, hey, this is like nature. Like this was an ode to like nature at its base form, right? And I was like, it was more of like a tribute, like interpretive dance kind of scene. And that's where I kind of yeah. fell into. And I was like, okay, this is actually kind of nice. Then I had to walk across them all, which was a little weird. <laughs> but I, was, I was like, okay, and there it is. There it is. There's, but, you know, there's the yeah, line. Like, and there it is. Be very but, careful uh, where you step. Yeah. <laughs> and then I loved Gitsy the whole time. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i don't want to see what's going on thank you so much for that oh my mother was there for 10 right minutes foot, i've foot, loved right it foot, left foot Yitzi has never seen herself naked so she doesn't need to see anyone else <laughs> Oh my God! This wait. There's a there's a there's a whole lore piece to tap yeah. in. There, I, I don't know if we have time. That's it. I'll be on. I, that's I that. that's the end. I don't think I can go anywhere else other than that lore drop. You heard it here first. Patreon. I'm. You're welcome. I'm speechless. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys next after the show. Much love. Oh. What did I just hear? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Seriously, 